Hey guys, this is Sean Anthony making my third installment of my Micro Stakes Hyper Turbo series. Uh, for this one, I'm actually going to just be playing one table compared to the two in the past videos. Uh, I think that's going to give me a little more time to uh, reflect on hands in a more descriptive way. Uh, even with two tables, uh, a live video is quite hectic. So, um, yeah, let's see how this one table goes. So immediately we are going to develop a preflop strategy here. Uh, in that strategy we can include limps with a hand like 7-6 offsuit. Good playability postflop keeps the pot small preflop. Uh, it allows us to possibly barrel uh, in a deeper stacked situation in position. Uh, so this is a good option. Uh, also, it's possible that min raise is the best option. Again, these guys that I'm playing right now, I have no information on. Uh, I typically, like I've said in the past, like to min raise very wide uh, to start off a, uh, start off the game, just to see if my opponent is uh, overfolding against my min raises. Opponents should be uh, playing a wide, wide range against min raises at uh, shallow stack depth. Uh, and if they're not, uh, it's very profitable to just min-raise and pick up that fold equity right away. Uh, here, I'd be value betting one street with a lot of uh, my value, with my uh, one pair of hands. Um, the positives of betting here is there's greater fold equity on later streets. Negatives are we don't really have backdoor draws. And uh, if we're betting this hand, we're probably betting... Bluffing too many wide hands. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably uh, use 4x and 7x blockers to create a bluffing range, just because that takes away from hands that he uh, he continues with on the flop. Uh, betting, getting five to one here. I will call with the uh, with the high likelihood of bluffing a card like this, possibly if check two diamonds when check two, and then also I just have my went over to the board and uh, and my 7x gutter to the nuts um, getting 5 to 1. It's a pretty easy call. Another possibility would be to raise there, but I don't think I can rep enough value hands. I think King 5 offsuit here is a good uh, min raise hand looking for extra fold equity due to the king blocker. King blocker uh, Reduces the combinations he has that he might be three bet shoving, you know, king queen, king jack, a lot of king x hands, king ten suited type hand. So that's a fairly easy call on my part, fairly easy shove. Uh, I would take a note right away that he min raised called king ten off at 15 big blinds. So how would I change up my ranges with that? Uh, this is a hand actually I like to balance. Um, my shoves with, uh, I'm going to have a lot of like low ace x, some higher ace x hands to balance also, um, but then I can throw in some of my small suited connectors to balance there and gain a lot of fold equity. It's tough for him to call a wide range knowing that a, lo a large portion of my shoving range there is uh, ace x hands. <clears throat> Flat the jack 10 offsuit. I will, uh, think I will, yeah, against this size, I'll just call one, play a turn. See what develops. If he bets small again, it's unfortunate. Um, I think I can pretty easily shove right here. If he continues to bet those small uh, bet sizes on the flop, I, I will th start throwing some check raises in there with hands like that. I continue my min raising game so far. Um, I think it's a fairly easy min raise with ace jack. Here, uh, there's a couple options here. Uh, I'm just gonna shove, I think, six sevens in his range, seven nine. He'll have the occasional eight, possibly five X there, but uh, I think we have enough uh, equity against his calling range, and um, we have some fold equity, in my opinion. Um, 
So yeah. Another note that I would take right there would be that he donks. Uh, that's actually a very important note. It would be he donks um, on an 855 board, shallow stacked after calling a min raise. Uh, that's a board that I'd be C betting a lot. Whereas the standard player is C betting, probably over C betting. So it's probably more profitable um, to be check raising there just because you pick up that C bet and uh, you're just folding out um, a lot of bluffs by by leading that flop. So I would take that note and you know when he from there on uh, when he checks the flop to me, I would think his range is much weaker due to that. I take advantage of that. Uh, here with my queen of diamonds, I can think I will c bet, uh, check back turn, and decide whether or not to bluff catch river. I think with a lower diamond in my hand. Um, it might be better to just check back queen here, or check back a 3x, but I think there is some value, uh, especially in shallow stack format. The possibility of him having an ace of diamond in his hand is less likely. It's not unlikely completely, but it's less likely. So a 3x with a queen diamonds you know, has great equity um, going forward in the hand. This is an easy shove over a 3x. Get called by Queen Jack offsuit. Uh, 22 big lines, I believe it was. This is an easy shove for me. This this hand can go both ways. Uh, without any reads, like I said, I do like um, just see betting there with my pair plus most likely best flush draw available, especially at the micro stakes. Um, there's a higher likelihood of getting called by a hand that is incredibly dominated by you, like an eight, eight, nine with a diamond, something like that. And then when you when your opponent hits the diamond, you basically get his stack because he's never folding a flush draw or a flush on the turn or the river. So uh, at the higher stakes, I think it's a good balancing play possibly to check back a hand like this. <clears throat> I'm going to continue uh, starting with a min raise game. Uh, even if I see my first two min raises get three bet, I'm going to think uh, that it's more likely he is a prevalent three better, and I'll start working on limps immediately. This is a good hand, I believe, to, uh, to see bet. We have backdoor straight draws with the three and we have backdoor clubs with the queen. Um, not gonna continue here. Bluffs that I would continue would be uh, six, seven, uh, six, three, six, eight, those type of hands. If I'm using a queen high hand uh, in my bluffing range here, I think I'd be bluffing too much for the amount of value hands that I'd have. So it'd be easier for him to call pretty lately. <coughs> Excuse me. I think it's possible we have the best hand here, but again, if I'm if I'm calling queen queen high here, I'm just calling way too much against a bet like this. Uh, it's possible. Like I, I don't think it's likely he's betting five x or four x for value here, uh, and he has a ton of those straight draws that I just mentioned himself. But uh, yeah, I think it's a bit ambitious to be calling there with queen high. This is a hand that I like to limp to start with. We keep the pot shallower. Or, um, excuse me, we keep uh, the pot smaller, we're in position, uh, we're able to barrel more streets due to the greater stack depths, and uh, it's a great hand for a situation like that because it has playability with its suitedness and connectedness. I will check back here. I like having some flush draws in my range that check back, considering you know flush draws and flops are one of the most likely hands uh, to put in your seabed bluffing range. It's nice to occasionally have a check back flush draw in order to, uh, if your opponent views, you know, a heart on the river or heart on the turn as uh, helping his range more than mine because I checked back the flop, uh, it uh, disguises my, my hand a little bit.
what I mean by that is that some opponents will, you know, see a check back here and immediately take out heart draws from my range and therefore be overly aggressive on turns and rivers when a heart does come because they should have more heart draws than, than me in my range, in their range. Um, so I would be able to take advantage against such a strategy by putting, you know, whether it's 15, 10 or 15 heart combos in my check back flop range. It's an easy shove at this stack that was with ace four suited. Uh, depending on opponent, min raise, open shove, and lamp are all fine here. Um, let's see if you guys understand when it would be best to do all those. I think uh, against an opponent that is folding a lot preflop, I think a min raise is probably best against an opponent who is. Um, this here. <clears throat> Again, an opponent who is folding to min raise is a lot preflop. Uh, min raise would probably be best. A guy who is not calling Nash, not nearly wide enough Nash at 13 or 14 boob lines. Uh, I think an open shove has some credibility or uh, has some purpose. And also, I think a guy who is not doing either of those exploitably, I think a limp allows us to, again, keep the pot small and uh, and play from there. Now, if you get a guy that's shoving over your limps widely, playing a lot post-flop out of position against your min raises and calling an optimal range um, against your open shoves, then you're probably playing you know, a fairly decent player, and you might want to look for for another game. I'm not saying that there is an edge to be had. It's just, uh, especially at these stakes, uh, there are guys that have many more exploitable uh, strategic tells uh, where you might want to, not want to be playing a guy who is capable, that capable at these stack, stakes. King four offsuit here uh, again. If I'm c betting here, like I could probably get away with a 32 bet here or a 40 bet. I don't think my opponent can defend wide enough. Um, but I'm gonna have four five here. Uh, you know what? I might be limping some of those hands by this point. Um, Ace X is a great turn for me. Some opponents see this as a very bluffable card, so therefore they call you down even lighter than usual. Um, I'm going to take advantage of it, though. I don't think an opponent at this stake will uh, will see that too often. That's just the card that just drills my bluffing range, both flop and turn. Like now, eight nine got there, four five got there. It's very hard for me to have many bluffs here. Um, some heart draws, I guess. But by this point, if I'm betting. Uh, King high in the turn there, that's almost a mandatory bluff on a 7x river. Just because so many of my bluffs that I did have uh, got there by the river that my king 4 instantly became very far down in my overall range. I'm just going to continue min-raising here. Just standard min-raise call. Uh, that would be note that I take would be 3-bet shove for... Uh, three bet shoved, four eight suited at thirteen, big blinds. How would I manipulate my ranges? Once seeing that, I would uh, tend to uh, min raise wider for value. Um, I would call, I would min raise call much more often. I wouldn't uh, min raise bluff as often. I'd start limping more of my weaker hands uh, and go from there. Again, this is a spot where I would put three question marks afterwards. Um, you know, this is actually what I would do. Three bet, three bet shove, shallow stacks, weakish, and then put three question marks after it. And if, you know, I see a few more times of him shoving hands like that, which I'm not saying it's horrible against my strategy, I'm just saying that you don't see many players. Doing that necessarily at this stack, at uh, this uh, stakes that 
uh, I would start taking away these question marks if I grew more confident with my read. Uh, okay, I'm going to cut the video short uh, this time, but if you guys have any questions, please leave them, and I will continue responding to them as quickly as possible. Thanks, guys.